This video is for Digital Society IBDP higher level students. Uh, they're preparing for their November 2024 exam, in particular the paper three. Now paper three, what happens is there's a pre-release statement that is issued to all students. And you, as a student, you're supposed to research that area. So this is to basically help you research uh, all the themes and the key issues for paper three. Uh, so you can pr you're well prepared to sit your exam. So first of all, I've created a blog post in this website here, ibdigitalsociety.com. So if you go to the blog, this one here, I just published one hour ago and I've had two views already. Okay, so here it is. So basically there's a couple of stages that the IB wants you to uh, follow to explore all the issues surrounding uh, the pre-release paper. So first of all, get your hands on the paper, read the paper, underline all the key terms. Uh, it's addressing the issue 5.3C, managing pollution. So the key issues there are pollution waste monitoring, prevention and reduction. So get familiar with these terms and the differences between those. Now the paper in particular they're talking about is the World Economic Forum report from 2029. So I've just given a little bit of background information about what that report was all about so you understand where it comes from and who the key people uh, were that were involved. Now, to go down to the next thing, like after looking at that uh, the pre-release paper, and I'll just open it up now. So, so this is the pre-release statement. So here again, get familiar with that. So as you can see, right here, the first thing about the challenge, it talks about this report. So get your hands on that report and see what it's all about. That's the first thing. Second thing, uh, some of the key technology. So we're looking at here, I've listed a couple of main, the main technologies that are involved in this pre-release statement. Now I've also identified some of the key organizations. So what I'm just providing you, I'm not telling you the information, I'm just pointing you in the right direction for you to do some study. Now I've got a comprehensive list here and you can't cover everything. Your exams are coming up, so the idea is just to focus on a couple of key areas so when you're sitting in the exam room, you can recall some of these key areas and you can actually identify some organizations. For example, the UNEP or the, Go, uh, the Google Environmental Insights Explorer. So when you drop some of these key terms or key organizations and add a sentence on to explain them, the examiners are gonna know that you're actually, you have dug deeper and you've explored some of these issues. So here is not, it's not a comprehensive list, but more signposting to help you find some areas to study. So here are some key organizations and exam, uh, examples that are related to paper three. Now this is important about the complexity and the challenge, because this is a challenge. So you're presented with a challenge and once we work through stage one, two, three, eventually we're gonna to get to some interventions. The interventions to respond to the challenges. So get to know the challenges. So in your exam room, you are, you are, if you have some intimate knowledge of the challenges, you're gonna do well in your exam. Now, I think it's very important to understand as you're exploring the key challenges that you can recognize some of the key theories or innovators in this field and actually what their contributions are for. Now, I understand you can't memorize and understand and explore all of these, so just get maybe get onto one. Maybe you're interested in the Amsterdam City Donut, or maybe you want to explore Andrew McAfee, McAfee's core theory. So just focus on maybe one or two, so you can use this in your responses when you're sitting in the exam room. So there are some suggestions about some key thinkers. Here, it's very important to have some real life examples that you can call upon in your exam room. In the, when you're sitting in the exam room. Here are some key organizations and leading innovators. So again, you can't cover it all, so just pick maybe one or two and just try and explore a little bit more so you have a, some kind of a background knowledge about what these leading innovations are all about. Now, actually looking at this paper really closely, so all of that is a little bit of background information about this realm that we're studying. Now we're focusing in our attention onto the actual paper. So here are some of the key points that I've pulled out and extracted 
from the pre-release statement, but I've pulled them out and then I've also expanded upon them a little bit. So here is a study guide for you. Uh, if you can start to get a bit familiar with some of these areas, you're gonna be well prepared for the exam. So whatever the exam questions are, you've got some good intimate knowledge. So I'm, we're still, right now, we're just exploring the issues, the complexities of the challenge, getting some background information, also understanding some different parts in the world where this challenge applies, some of the key thinkers that are involved in the challenge, some of the key organizations involved in the challenge. So this is all your exploration inquiry phase. So different parts of the world, the key problems here uh, about the environmental impacts, the health hazards and the resource waste. Here are some real life examples. Again, this is just headlines you need to then study a little bit more about. Maybe just pick on one of these. Maybe just focus in on the Delhi, India example. Now, here are some of the key concerns. So these are some digital society key terms that you should know about these and be able to ex explain what planned obsolescence is. You should be able to identify some of the characteristics of it. You also should be able to give a real life example. And the same with the rest of these terms here. Uh, now, this is to demonstrate that you have some current information. So here are some emerging concerns. So you can see the first one on the list is the new technology waves. It's talking about 5G. So 5G was rolled out somewhat recently. So this is what they call the emerging concern. So what happens, the technology is introduced and then the impacts are then discovered. So sometimes there's some unintended consequences and it, common theme is often when technology is rolled out, the uh, innovators, the creators often view the technology with rose tinted glasses. They think, oh, this is good. They think about the positives, the positives, the positives. Once the technology is rolled out, then they start to discover, oh, there's some negatives as well. So that's why it's important to have this, some of the emer to be, be aware of some emerging concerns in this field. Systemic issues here. Uh, economic models, infrastructure gaps. So here again, you can explore some of these themes. Don't explore them all, just pick one or pick two. If you're short of time, just pick one and explore that and, and, and uh, develop some knowledge in that one area. You can't be an expert on the whole thing. So just grab certain things and explore a bit deeper. Then you're ready to move on to stage two. Now stage two, the IB outlines, these are the questions that you should be able to answer. So if you've done some good background research uh, in investigating into that inquiry area, you should be able to just have a go at answering these questions on your own. So have a, have a shot at answering these on your own, then do a bit of research and match what you can find. So maybe you're using some generative AI tools to, to try and help answer these questions. See if your answer is a match to what the AI tool. So if you type these questions into something like ChatGPT or Perplexity or Gemini, see what the answers generate to check so if you've got your, your knowledge and what the AI generator produces and see if it's a match or a mismatch. And if it's a mismatch, you need to learn a little bit more about this area. So I've outlined some key points in uh, for stage two. Now just be aware, I'm rushing through this because I know the exam's coming up soon. So this is a quick video just to outline some key areas of study. So I've outlined some answers and I've talked about key points, research areas and real life examples. Uh, so that's stage two, answering those IB questions. Stage three, this is now intervention time. So you're going to have to come up and create your own intervention. Now the good thing about doing some good background research, you've got a couple of models that you can kind of you've studied and you could probably piece together and maybe connect a few and come up with your own intervention. So there's going to be a chance in the exam where you present your own intervention, your idea. So your intervention needs to either mitigate, intercede, enhance or resolve and be sure to use those words or the word that you're focusing on when you're responding in the exam room. Stage four, evaluation. Now, the, when the, in your exam room, you'll have a question that says evaluate. Now, you could be evaluating the interventions that are presented in the pre-release and evaluate your own intervention as well. Now, when you evaluate, you need to evaluate through the lens of equity, acceptability, cost, 
feasibility, innovation, and ethics. Now again, you can't do it all. You don't have enough time in your exam room to cover all of those. So maybe focus in on just two or maybe three. So when you think of analyze, the anal easiest thing to remember is analyzing is something like a SWOT analysis, strength and weakness. So if you just think of strength, weakness, opportunities and threats, even if you're short of time, just think of the strengths and weaknesses and you need to do a bit of both, but do the strengths and weaknesses of things like cost. Strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats when it comes to acceptability. Will your innovation be accepted by the users or the governing bodies, whatever the stakeholder you're focusing in on? So that's, this is a very, very quick video just to highlight so some information here on my blog to help you study and prepare for the Paper 3 uh, exam. I wish you all the very best for Paper 3 Digital Society Higher Level.